Hi, boys and girls. I have brought along my slideshow once again. Today, we're going to look at slides from my friends, some of whom are cold-blooded animals and some of whom are warm-blooded animals. By the sound of it, you would think that warm-blooded animals have warm blood and cold-blooded animals have cold blood. But in fact, this is not the case. The body temperature of a cold-blooded animal changes according to the surroundings or environment of that animal, whereas a warm-blooded animal maintains about the same temperature all of the time. I heard that you are keeping a chart to sort or classify animals into groups. What a great idea! You are practicing taxonomy, the study of classifying organisms exactly like taxonomists do. You're going to be learning how to sort animals in lots of different ways. Today we are going to see, uh, sort these five vertebrate groups into two smaller groups by discovering some common characteristics. You'll learn how to tell which animals are cold-blooded and which animals are warm-blooded. Now, I'd like to help you understand a little bit more about cold-blooded animals. Paulo Piranha lives in the country of Colombia on the continent of South America. He's a fish. His body temperature, the measure of how warm his body is on the inside, changes with his surroundings. Right now, his temperature is the same as the water in which he is swimming. When you go swimming, chances are the water is colder than your body temperature. I suppose it may depend on the day, but my guess, guess is that the water is usually a bit cooler than you are. Paulo does not ever feel cold in water because there is no difference between his temperature and the water temperature where he lives. Have you ever used a thermometer? Perhaps when you are sick, your parents or a nurse might measure your temperature with a thermometer. When warm-blooded people get ill, their temperatures often rise or go up. A person's normal body temperature is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and it remains con constant or about the same most of the time. That's very different from Paulo. The way in which an animal's body temperature is controlled determines whether it is a warm-blooded or cold-blooded animal. My friend Paulo told me that his internal or inside body temperature is never constant. It does not stay the same. He cannot heat his body from the inside like you, so his temperature must change with his surroundings in order for his body to work properly. He becomes hot when it is hot around him and cold when it is cold around him. So you see, although you and Paulo are both vertebrates, you also have differences. One of you is cold-blooded and one of you is warm-blooded. You are right, you are warm-blooded. So that makes Paulo, yes, cold-blooded. Most fish are cold-blooded. In fact, most animals on earth are cold-blooded. Two of my other friends are cold-blooded as well. Does anyone know who else among them is cold-blooded? Great answers. Next, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Anna Anaconda. Like Paulo, Anna lives in the rainforest of South America too, in the country of Peru. In fact, she shares Paulo's river home. But she is not a fish. She can swim, but she lives on land and is not dependent upon the water to stay alive. Does anyone remember what group of animals Anna belongs to? That's right. Anna anaconda is classified as a reptile, and she shares some of Paulo's characteristics. They're both cold-blooded, but that doesn't mean that they don't enjoy being warm. Anna loves the heat. Her body is very long indeed, and she told me that one of her favorite things to do is bask in the sun. The sun helps her stay warm, and her body soaks up the heat from the warm ground as well. Because she cannot control her own body temperatures, Anna depends upon the sun and her warm surroundings to keep her properly warm. In fact, my other cold-blooded friend, Tabitha Toad, likes the sun too. Frogs and toads share the 
share some of the same characteristics as fish and reptiles. They use their surroundings to maintain or keep constant the proper body temperature. Yes, indeed, Tabitha Toad is cold-blooded, just like Paulo and Anna. And, like Paulo and Anna, Tabitha is very comfortable around water. She comes from the Amazon rainforest in the country of Brazil. But just because her home is near the largest river in the world, it doesn't mean she lives in water all the time. Tabitha and all toads are actually more comfortable on land, whereas frogs prefer to be wet. Tabitha is an amphibian, which means that she can live both in and out of the water. So there you have it. Fish, reptile, amphibian. Three groups of cold-blooded creatures. Their body temperatures change depending upon where they are, becoming warm when their surroundings are warm and cold when it's cold around them. Because they do not have constant body temperatures, they can easily become too hot or too cold. They have developed characteristics and behaviors so that they can live in certain habitats. My three friends do not live in very cold climates, but some cold-blooded animals do. In order to stay warm in colder climates, some snakes huddle or crowd together, hibernating underground during the winter months. Some turtles dig deep down into the warm mud and hibernate at the bottom of streams and ponds to stay warm when it is cold outside. I'm thinking that this turtle is searching for just the right spot in which to hibernate along with along this muddy bottom. In the winter, there is less food for animals to forage or search for, so it is a good time for them to hibernate or become inactive and live off the stored energy of their bodies. Cold-blooded animals that live in very hot climates must do something like hibernate too. Instead of hibernation, which describes the process of keeping warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals from freezing when it is cold outside, the term estivation is used to describe the process of keeping only cold-blooded animals from overheating when it is very hot outside or losing too much moisture during very dry periods. For example, crocodiles estivate or become inactive when it is hot. They stay in water or mud to cool off and escape the heat of the very hot climates where many of them live. Some snails estivate to stay moist during parts of the summer dry season. So, everybody, let's look. Let's see what you have learned from seeing our cold-blooded friends, Paulo, Anna, and Tabitha. If the temperature outside is 45 degrees Fahrenheit, what are their body temperatures going to be? Right, 45 degrees. Cold-blooded animals do not have constant internal body temperature. It changes with their surroundings. Warm-blooded animals like you and me are much different. If the outside temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit, what is your internal temperature going to be? about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit because our bodies regulate our internal body temperatures and keep them constant. We are able to live in both very hot and very cold climates. Most of the time, warm-blooded animals don't even have to think about regulating their body temperatures. They use the food they eat to produce heat inside their bodies. Sometimes, however, in especially cold or hot temperatures, they need to do a little extra something to help regulate their temperature. What do you do to help your body stay warm when it is very cold outside? Yes, you may put on extra layers of clothing, move around, sit by the fire, or drink some hot chocolate. Who can tell me what you do to cool off on a hot day? Yes, you may take off some extra clothing, lie still, go for a swim, or have a cool drink. Dogs pant and humans sweat to cool off as well. Like people, other animals seek out the shade. 
of trees to cool themselves. Some animals, like the elephant, can fan themselves with their large ears. The large, thin ears of some animals are good places for the heat to escape, which cools their body even more. Let's learn about two of my other friends, my warm-blooded friends, a bird, Ebenezer Egret, and a fellow mammal, Hilda Hippo. They both live on the continent of Africa. Ebenezer in the country of South Africa and Hilda in the East African country of Tanzania. Mammals and birds produce their own body heat internally, which keeps their body temperatures constant. We are going to see some ways these warm-blooded animals help their bodies hold on to their warmth when it's cold outside and keep cool when it's very hot outside. For instance, a body characteristic of a whale is that it has blubber, which gives it extra help in staying warm. This allows a whale to have a wider range of habitats because it can swim in colder waters. One thing's for sure, Ebenezer Egret does not put on a winter coat like you do when it's cold outside. Of course, he doesn't need to put on an extra coat because he's already got a brilliant coat of feathers. Feathers help keep Ebenezer warm. Want to know an interesting fact about oh, that Ebenezer shared with me while I was visiting South Africa? Egret's beautiful white feathers were once prized by hat makers who used them for the sake of women's hat fashion and beauty not warmth. Imagine that. Birds that live in cold climates sometimes travel south for the winter to make it easier to stay warm and find more available food. Migration is a behavior or something an animal does to help it stay warm. Often physical characteristics help an animal stay warm. Ebenezer wears a coat of feathers and I wear a coat of fur. Are you wondering what Hilda Hippo uses for a little additional warmth because she doesn't have fur? Let's take a look and see. I have a bit of news for you. In the tropical hot climate of Africa where Hilda Hippo lives, trying to stay cool is a mere common occurrence than trying to stay warm. It's a more common occurrence than trying to stay warm. Hilda's body design <clears throat> is perfect for helping her stay cool. She has a nice layer of blubber that insulates her and helps her float. Hippopotami spend lots of time in the water of lakes and rivers to escape the heat. Can you see any other characteristics of the hippopotamus that help it stay in the water for long periods of time? Good observations. Notice how having its nostrils, eyes, and ears on the top of its head lets the hippopotamus keep most of its body underwater where it can stay cool. Ebenezer also uses water to stay cool. Even though egrets can't swim, they do spend lots of time wading in the water, mostly to get their dinner. They feast on fish and toads and plenty of insects in order to store up the energy needed to control their body temperatures. Well, everybody, our time is up for today. You have learned a lot about the taxonomy of cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. So now you can fill in our class classification chart. Next time we meet, we'll continue with our slideshow and sorting our animal friends into groups those with backbones and those without. Do you think Hilda Hippo has a backbone? How about if you mull this over until next time and be ready to share your predictions? I can't wait to see all of you again and continue with the show. Bye for now.